Hello again everyone and welcome back to my workshop. I was sent a message by Neil asking if it was possible to start and stop and reset a timer on a single push button. Uh, well, I don't have a push button, but I do have a spring-loaded switch, which is the same thing. And yes, it is possible. So here's the timer. I'll give a little pull of the switch to start it. Timer started. Stop it. Timer stopped. Timer started. Timer stopped. But now, a long press of the button will reset the timer without uh, starting or stopping it. Watch this. Timer reset. And just to prove it's not messing about with it, if we start the timer running... Timer started. If I now do a long pull, it will reset the timer so the time you're seeing they will jump back to zero, but it doesn't affect the running of the timer, so the timer running will continue. So it'll jump back to zero and continue to count up again. Timer reset. And we can... Timer stopped. And the reason I've put those voice files in is I'm assuming that Neil perhaps wants to do this whilst he's flying a model. Uh, and it's it's nice to have audio confirmation that you've pressed the button properly and you've you've stopped it, started it, reset it, whatever you're up to, so you don't have to look down to be sure of what's happening. Okay, how do we do this? Because uh, we really have to do some crafty little bit of programming here. The easy way is to use Dave McQueenie's uh, short paw, short press, long press switch Lua app, but that has the snag that it, it's really quite resource hungry because of the way it has to get information from the transmitter, which means that if you have the transmitter that does not have a color screen, you cannot, alarm. Oh, go away, dear. you cannot run that app. And so I've been racking my brains trying to find a way to do it purely within the Jetty software, and I found it. So it's a little bit more complicated, but we can do it. And so here we go. I'll show you what to do. Uh, we need to create a couple of sequencers. Uh, so we'll have Q1 and Q2. And what they're going to do effectively is set up the logic conditions for a logical switch. Uh, and the point of Q1 and Q2 is Q1 will start running on for a second uh, and it would just run through and then go back off when you ping the switch. Q2, when you pull the switch, uh, promptly goes off and it will only go on for a fraction of an instant when you release the switch. Uh, and if those two times coincide, then you'll get an output ping. But if you hold the switch on for more than the relevant amount of time for more than a second, it can never uh, both be on at the same time, and therefore the logic switch can make use of it. Okay, let's set up Q1. So Q1, the switch is uh, our um, button. Go into the advanced. It must be asymmetrical, and it must always finish the sequence. Okay. And so, because it's asymmetrical, we've got two different curves, depending on whether the button is pressed or not. So, let's have a look at the uh, button not pressed. Basically, at time zero, we've created a point with a value of minus 100, and that's it. You can maybe just make out the tiny little circle there. That's all there is. Let's uh, press the button. It runs along. Timer reset. You can see, uh, if we come into this, I'll run it back to zero. You need a point at zero seconds with a value of minus 100. Another point at 0 0.1 seconds with a value of plus 100. Come along. And another point at one second with a value of 100. Okay, let's go down to Q2. Have a look in its advanced. Again, it's the same switch, the push button. Again, it's asymmetrical, 
but do not always finish the sequence this time. So that's the only change you need to make, is make it asymmetrical again. Okay, so again, there's two curves to set up. With the uh, push button not pressed, time zero, a value of minus 100. And at time 0.1 seconds, a value of plus 100. Press the button and let's take a Time look of reset. at the sequence. At zero, a point of minus 100. Ignore that one. And at 1.1 seconds, another value of minus 100. <clears throat> okay, dokie. That's it. What will happen then is that if you do a press of <coughs> a second or less, <coughs> There will be a point where both sequencers will output a value of plus 100, which means a logical AND switch can make use of it. If you hold the button down for more than a second, there will never be a point in the sequence overlap where they're both at plus 100. And therefore, a logical AND switch will never switch on. Ha ah, clever. Right, let's go to our logical switches. <clears throat> the first one. And the control one is sequencer one. So you go into there, I'll clear it out to show you. Come down, sequencer Q1. Okie dokie. Control two is sequencer two. The condition is and. and let's have a look what happens uh, if I do a short press of the switch. Timer started. Output goes on for a short time. If I do a long press of the switch. Timer reset. It never manages to go on because the two don't get a tick at the same time. And we can now use that single output pinging in logic switch two. So the input for both is logic switch one, but the condition is A on B off. And those output pings from one will toggle the output Timer of that. Timer stopped. Timer started. Timer stopped. Timer started. But if I do a long press, because the output from logic switch one never went on. Timer reset. It'll never do that. OK. And finally, logic switch three. This is the one that does the reset. There's only one input, which again is the push button. Uh, no input B, no condition. But come along here and press the button to change it from a slope to the vertical ramp and put in two seconds or one and a half seconds, some reasonably longer time than we set up the sequencer for. So that that is the amount of time you'll have to hold the button down to do the reset of the timer. Now we can go to the timer and put all these things in. So the switch to switch the timer on and off is logic switch two. That's the A on B off switch. And the reset switch is logic switch three. That's the one with only one input and the hard ramp. OK. And if you want those um, voice messages confirming what you've done. Oh, silly me, it's not here. It's advanced properties. Sounds on event. The first switch will be logic switch two. And uh, when it switches on, it gives me timer started. The next one for the timer stopped is also logic switch two, but reversed. So let's take a look in there. So again, you would assign logic switch two, but press the reverse button so that it pings when the logic switch goes off. And that way, timer stopped. And then, of course, logic switch three is the one with the message timer reset. And that's how you do it. Timer stopped. Timer started. Timer stopped. Timer reset. Have fun with that, folks.